Hello, good evening, welcome to my channel, Paul Cherry Trains, home of Bedstead Junction. It's uh, Wednesday the 8th of March 2023. Now this is the second video I've made today, and it's because I've had quite a few arrivals all arrive at once. Uh, the first thing I had arrived was the uh, replacement drive gear for my Hornby Tender Driven County Class 440 Great Western. And I've already fitted that, and that's in a previous video I made today. Um, also, the parts arrived for my Railroad 440 County Class, that was the, the pickup plates. And also, um, on the 2nd of, of this uh, month, I ordered a new locomotive. And it's a Great Western uh, Railway Hall Class. And it was a gap in my collection that I wanted to uh, particularly fill. And I'm going to be showing you that locomotive uh, quite shortly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to also talk about briefly about the, all the uh, pre sort of running checks uh, which I uh, make on a locomotive. And uh, the next time you'll uh, see this locomotive, next time you'll see this uh, video on this video now, the next thing you'll see is uh, the locomotive actually going around the tracks and we'll talk about it, okay? So I'll be back with you in just a few moments. Now the locomotive you can see go around the tracks uh, tonight is my latest purchase. It's a Hornby Hall class and it's called Rude Ashton Hall. It's about R W D R O O D. I don't know if I'm actually pronouncing that right, but it sounds like it's pronounced Rude Ashton Hall. And um, when I saw this uh, come up for sale, I thought well, I'd better go in and buy it. Now there are only two available on eBay at, at the time of my purchasing this. Uh, there was this one, and there weren't a huge amount of photographs about it, to be perfectly honest with you. But it was described as a uh, new old stock, basically. Uh, in fact, it was ex-shop stock, it was described as, and, and being uh, brand new in the box. Now, I've got to be honest with you, I mean, I, I've, I took a chance on it actually meeting the description. And does it meet that description? Uh, yes, it does. Um, I've been over this locomotive just to check it's okay and uh, there were no parts loose in the box. Now we're going to have a closer look at this locomotive in due course and we'll talk a, a bit about the um, the checks that I would make on a locomotive um, as soon as I received it. Okay well the first thing that I did was I just quickly checked um, is it complete? Yes, it is. Uh, does it run forwards and backwards? Uh, yes, it does. And you can see this now running around the track very, very smoothly. Very nice, very nice model, in my opinion. Now we're talking a bit about the locomotive itself, uh, Rude Ashton Hall. Now it's an interesting one because it does time with one of my earlier videos. Uh, where I showed you my um, Hornby Albert's Hall, another Hall class. Now, when this particular locomotive was actually uh, plucked out of uh, Barry Scrapyard, there was conf there was uh, an element of confusion over what this, um, which the locomotive this was. Now, the uh, Pres Preservation Society initially thought they were uh, saving Albert's Hall. But further investigation actually uh, proved that this locomotive uh, was in fact Rude Ashton Hall. But the actual preserved locomotive as it stands today actually does um, bear both can bear, bear both nameplates and so both identities have, have been used on it. It's actually preserved as Rude Ashton Hall, but it also can be Albert's Hall. So they would actually change the names and the numbers, obviously, to suit. Now, because it was thought initially, when I looked at the history of Albert's Hall, I thought Albert Hall hadn't been saved. When in fact it does, in fact it lives on as Rude Ashton Hall. A bit about a brief history. And the Hall classes were an interesting class of locomotive. Uh, they're a development of the uh, original Church Ward Saint class of locomotive. I mean, it was decided that um, the Great Western Railway needed a mixed traffic locomotive. 
uh, because the 4300 class, his moguls, uh, were beginning to get on a little bit and, and covering high mileages. And basically, this is a small, smaller world version of the Saint. And it's got a different shape, shape cab and other differences with it. But basically, it's, the Saint, it, it's a development of the Saint's class. I say with smaller wheels to make it more suitable for mixed traffic. Uh, the Saint's class would seem to be not suitable for uh, mixed traffic um, duties because of the size of its wheels. Now as you see it's running very very well. Very very well indeed. And it's actually, uh, this is part of the running in process we're talking about now. So uh, as soon as we've, um, as soon as I finish shooting this video, I will be con uh, continuing the running in process. So we have an hour's running in, we got an hour's running forward, an hour running backwards at moderate speeds. And it's only then that I'll be actually uh, committing this one in, 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 into service. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the camera just briefly. And then we're going to be having a look at this one on the Lazy Susan. And we'll also talk about the model itself in, in, in detail, okay? So I'll be back with you quite shortly. Right, so this is uh, Hornby's Rude Ashton Hall. More up close and personal. And I think one of the things which we... Um, needs to think about is does this locomotive differ from the Hornby Railroad version? Now I've got Adderley Hall now I can only talk about the differences and similarities that I'm actually aware of uh, tonight on first uh, look at this locomotive very very nice okay very very nice model very very pleased with it now it's got the usual um, copper cap chimney. That looks like that could be metal. Then it's got the brass um, safety valve represented. That looks like it's uh, coloured plastic. And they've got the brass uh, whistles as well. Uh, you've got a fully glazed cab there. Now, it's got the uh, BR Leach Crest. So this would be the, the crest which it would... Uh, would have had from 1956 onwards. Uh, you can also see the reversing gear there is quite nicely represented and also uh, separately fitted parts around the boiler there. Very very nice there. So you've got the separately fitted handrail. One difference I noticed uh, between this uh, locomotive and the um, the railroad version, and we just have a convenient pointer. Just bear just a moment. We need something to point with. There we go. It's got lining on the cylinders. That's the first thing I noticed. Uh, it's also got the uh, roots marker above the number that number plate there. Uh, comes with a, probably a slightly more comprehensive uh, detail pack. And uh, like Adderley Hall, uh, it's got a fully glazed cap. Now there's also more detail in the cap, but not a huge amount. Okay. But I think it, it, it does um, add a little bit of extra to the cap. I think I'll be adding a crew to this particular cab of this locomotive. Now, talking about some of the checks... Uh, which I would make on a locomotive before running. Now what I've done, and this comes from bitter experience, okay. I've uh, invested in one of these, which is the uh, nut spinner, or nut spanner. So we've got a hex good head either end there. Large and a small, it's usually the large one that fits. And it's got screwing crank pins there's one here one here and one here and it's the same on the other side now I have checked those crank pins are in fact uh, done up tight and they are okay 
I've unfortunately not just been Hornby, it's been Backman as well. I've had the unfortunate situation where a crank pin's come out. Well, I've been lucky that I found the other the, the crank pins on the uh, on the track, but it's not very really, it's not a really nice situation having the crank pin coming out and maybe all this thrashing around. Okay, so I've checked that's fine and it's absolutely perfect on this model. So again, never stating the obvious and probably repeating it just on the other side. But it's another crank pin there, there and there. And I've done them up. Uh, I've, I've checked they're done up tight and they were up tight anyway. Now another thing that I would do is check that uh, when I've run it around the track briefly that it's not making any funny noises which it's not doing and also what I would do is I'll have a quick look at the service sheet just to check where they recommend that they, they should be oiled you can see it's in red dots there so it's on uh, all of the the crank areas there and also the the wheel bearings on the locomotive as well so that's where they recommend that you put a drop of oil there that's what I've done and I've left well alone on anywhere else okay um, I've not removed the body yet and as the reason for that it, is run, it seems to be running perfectly well and I can I, I can usually tell I mean by the smell of this uh, locomotive there is grease actually on the inner workings. I will double check when I get a chance and I'll get the body off and I will in fact check that the uh, worm driver's got uh, grease on it. But from what I can tell it seems to be perfectly fine. Now we do get a, de a detail pack. I think we've got drain cocks here for the cylinders, a front coupling and brake rods for the locomotive and the tender. So that's our detail pack there. Sorry about the neat glare that you can see but you can uh, see it's got a nice little detail pack there. Sorry, me. pardon me, and that indicates that we've got a new locomotive because the detail pack's complete and it's unopened. It comes in the usual block of ice packaging, and to separate this from the railroad model, it's got the uh, you can tell by the different boxes. It's our three two o five. BR 460 class 4900 Rue Dashen Hall. DCC ready. And then to further differentiate this from the railroad model. We've got the usual outer sleeve with a picture of the locomotive on it. There's the top view. And on the back, it's got a nice history on the box, okay. Bureau Class 4905MT. Nice picture. And the history. Now here's some surprising things. Now these are things which may or may not matter to the railway modeler. And this was quite a surprise to me. You 
Now to excuse me here. Right. Okay. You do not get sprung buffers on this model. Some of you that may or may not be important. And some of you would say, well, sprung buffers is a sign that you're getting your money's worth. Now, I will explain to you why I think I've still got my money's worth on this particular one. Quite shortly. Now, there's also something else. Which I need to point out. And you can see it here. Let me get this uh, adjusted on here. There we go. Right, see, so you've got the number there. 4965 and the shed plate. The vacuum pipes attached and the hook on the buffer. A nice buffer being detailed there. Plenty of rivets. But you don't get a separately fitted dart. That's a moulded on dart. Now this, even though it's more, it seems to have been a bit more detail, you get a bit more stuff with it, okay? A few more detail refinements. This one is very, very similar to the railroad, uh, railroad version Adderley Hall, in that it didn't have the sprung buffers and the separate dart. But it's still a very, very nice model. Now, I don't know if we can see inside the cab. Sorry about that. We'll see if we can uh, move that right round. Mm. Okay. Uh, right, okay. Now, the only thing that's actually picked out and is actually painted silver uh, in here is the reversing lever. I want me to see that. Uh, and also the lever there. Okay. So there's two items only picked out. And also the this, this seats are coloured brown. But apart from that, no, one addition, no additional detail in the cab. But you do get... A tender full plate between the locomotive and the tender, okay? I don't know if you can see it there. But that seems to be a, a very, very steep angle. That's supposed to be a, a, a it is not it doesn't move, it's not hinged, it's actually fixed in position. And that's usually to fill the gap between the tender and the locomotive. When the foreman sort of reaches across to get this to get the coal, that's been glued in at quite a high position. But still a nice detail touch to have that. <coughs> Pardon me. And you don't get a full plate on the railroad version. I don't think on the railroad version you get the vacuum pipes attached either. I'm going to move on to the back of the tender now. It would appear that the steps here are moulded. That lamp iron definitely is part of the moulding. Vacuum pipe looks nice on there. Again, solid buffers, but they're metal. Now, I think that this is, uh, if you, I always thought of the um, Adderley Hall, the Hall class locomotive, I'd be like a kind of a railroad plus model this is probably a railroad plus plus sort of thing it's got extra details on it which brings it over and above the railroad version and I think I, I, it still represents for me a good purchase okay we'll see uh, you've got glazing in the cab there you can see Perfect. Now, let's say this was advertised as a new 
X shop stock, brand new in box, okay. And it appears to be that, okay. The, the actual detail packs unopened, that's always a good sign. The locomotive was all in one piece, nothing's fallen off. Seems very, very nice to me. I paid £130 for this. The only other one I've seen for sale was £110, okay, that was the other one I saw for sale, but that one was in the wrong box. For some reason that was being sold in a star in a box for a star class, which to me wasn't much good. I, I like to get my locomotives boxed and in the quick boxes. Especially if it's a, you know, this was what was a new a new one. But bear in mind, okay, this is a very, very nice locomotive, I think, if, if you're looking at a brand new locomotive for £130. The way that price have gone, even some small Backman locomotives are well over 200 now. And the class, uh, the Hornby Class 2 locomotive, 2 mixed traffic, that in their catalogue is coming in at well over 200 so £130 for this locomotive, yes, to me it represents very good value for money. So, just to recap on the actual pre, uh, the pre -run, running in checks then, what I've done on this one. I checked it looks complete. Everything's complete, the box looks in good condition. The detail pack's unopened. No bits have fallen off the locomotive. I've also, as, as a precaution, and you might think I'm taking this to extremes, I checked that all the crank pins were tightened up properly on it. Okay, so am I pleased? Yes, very pleased indeed. Rue Ashton Hall. It's basically to go with my um, much earlier, sort of model-wise, um, Hornby Albert's Hall. Uh, another thing which is uh, got on this locomotive as well, separately fitted on the tender, and if you can see it from here, we do have separately fitted handrails on the back of the cab and on the front of the tender. Also, the brake handle and the water scoop handle is quite well represented too. But something which may or may not be a problem for you. Just get back in focus. The handrails which are on the back of the tender are part of the moulding. Uh, would I let that put me off? No. Overall, I think it's a lovely model and it's going to be a nice addition to my collection. But you needed to be made aware of the kind of things I could see on this particular locomotive. Uh, the lamp irons on the front of the running plate, they look uh, reasonably well represented. Might be a separately fitted uh, lamp iron on the smoke box. Okay, so... The next time you'll see this locomotive, we'll be back on the track and we'll be carrying out uh, the running in process. Now, I'm also going to have a, a proper running session with this. Uh, once it's running, I'll probably do that tomorrow. I mean, it's uh, 25 past 10 now, so I'm probably unlikely to be able to get this video out before, say, half past 11. So it's another late night video, okay? But let's, let's get back into the running in session. I'll be back with you shortly. Right, so we're back with uh, Rudash and Hall actually uh, on the track again, um, continuing its running in curl. and give it another 20 minutes, I think, running forward, and then half an hour running backwards. Now, my next video is going to include two, uh, two locomotives. It's going to be this one, uh, pudding carriages. Let's see what I'd like pudding a load. And also, we're going to revisit this locomotive here, which are the sidings. 
and that was one of the other things that came today and that was one where the drive cog had come off the, come off the actual uh, spindle of the motor and so they were providing no drive at all um, to the wheels which I actually fixed and that's in a previous video which I made today and that's my lovely uh, County Class 440 by Churchward so that would be probably uh, the two locomotives in my running session and I'll probably include um, for comparison purposes the old um, Hornby Albert Hall which is in preservation virtually one of the same identity they sort of have both identities as locomotive and also we'll have a look at Adderley Hall which is the Hornby Railroad version as well we'll, we'll have a look and have, have a good monster running session a big sort of like bumper running session okay so if you like what you see please press the like button and subscribe and ring that bell and you'll be made aware of my next video which will be coming out quite shortly and that's going to be a, the, a, another big GWR running session including my hall classes and my county class 440 okay so what I would say now is I would thank you very very much for your interest thank you for watching and I should bid you farewell and good night